wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Good morning. We do welcome you to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Kent. I am Reverend Stephen, your minister. Thank you for joining us this morning as we gather virtually once again, a spiritual community working to be diverse and inclusive as we inspire love, seek justice, and grow together in community. We once again, welcome. Now, as we prepare for this time together of worship, let's take a moment to breathe to invite the spirit of love to be present among us and to open our hearts and minds to the spirit's call to build a beloved community here among us and out in the world. history of Valentine's Day is one that is kind of wrought with mystery as there were many different Valentines that were, can that were canonized and martyred by the Catholic Church. So the actual who St. Valentine was is, is uh, not quite known and it has several different origin stories. One of the most popular of the three saints who were martyred as Valentinus was that he was a minister under the, the rule of the emperor Claudius II, who decreed that all single men should remain single in order to make them better soldiers. So Valentine, heeding the call of unmarried lovers who could not wed under the emperor's rule, married the lovers in secret. And uh, this was found out by Claudius and he was, he was executed, but while in prison waiting for execution, the, the, the married, the married would lovers come would come back to his cell and send him Valentines of gratitude. Uh, there are also the rumor that his 
his story while in prison that he found maybe the jailer's daughter and before his execution sent her poems and love letters slip through the jail gates always addressed with from your valentine an expression we still use today but whatever the origin of valentine's day uh, valentine's day was decreed as the death of saint valentine on february 14th and it also has an a, a origin with the roman celebration of um, Lupercalia, which was a sort of a bacchanal fertility festival that had animal sacrifices awash with fertility rites and random coupling that was used to ward off evil spirits. So after four centuries of this, the, the Roman, the Catholic Church decided that Lupercalia was just a little too unchristian and so conveniently covered that holiday on February 14th with Valentine's Day, a day that's still celebrated now. But it wasn't until the Middle Ages that the romantic love aspect of Valentine's Day uh, really took a hold. It was during the Middle Ages that many people thought that the mating of birds began on cue on February 14th. And so, and so Valentine's, Valentine's Day was also, Day was also regarded, regarded as, a time, as a time of love and mating and uh, was celebrated to follow the romantic notions of nature. Valentine's Day cards were started around 1400 and still continue to this day. My own history with Valentine's Day is one more associated in arts and crafts as I love the tradition of making Valentine's, cutting out paper hearts, uh, decorating cards, flowers, and above all, the giving and the receiving of chocolate. So as we celebrate Valentine's Day today, we also look at the communal giving of, of a gift of, in the way of a story. And so the story that we share with you today is really a Valentine to our congregation as we celebrate the node to all aspects of love, both romantic, paternal, and communal. So let us celebrate Valentine's Day together. Come, let us worship together We join you in your universalist country, enlightening a chalice, a sign of life's beauty and wonder, an invitation to continue our ongoing search for the light of truth within us and among us, a symbol of peace and hope, and a reminder that we are all interconnected in the great web of existence, of which we are each a beloved part. As I light our shared chalice, I invite you to light your home chalice. Would you join me now in the words of our Congregational Covenant? We affirm that each life has brilliance and when joined with others in joyful community has the power to transform. We pledge ourselves and our resources to this journey. This covenant inspires and challenges us to dwell together in right relationship. We promise to extend hospitality, nurture community for all ages, encourage spiritual growth, honor diversity, and practice kindness. Once upon a time, or maybe long, long ago, there was a village. It was a prosperous and happy place. The people were kind and wise, and their gifts and skills were unique and celebrated for who they are. The children were all above average and made their beds every morning. The village's farms grew the very best vegetables. Their sheep produced the finest wool. Their goats had milk that made the tastiest cheese. People came from miles around to buy the best bread at the bakery. The town square had the prettiest flowers. The village was clean and everything was kept in very good repair. People helped each other and cared for each other. They were led by a kind and wise mayor who knew everyone in the village. Every day was an opportunity to say hello, to share news and to be thankful for living in such a great place. When someone was sick or injured, everyone helped them out and people all cared for each other. We're like that village a community where people care for one another, 
We have good things happen and there are hard things too. So now to care for one another, we take some time to share our joys and concerns, knowing that we heal when others listen to us and that celebration is even better when we do it together. I invite you now to use the chat box to share your joys and concerns this morning. Jim Scott shares concern for his friend, John, who is in hospice care. Colleen Taylor offers a gratitude for all the Hogwarts volunteers and teachers who are making magic this weekend. Thank you to each of you participating. Judy Deals says, my uncle Bob passed away this week at the age of 91. We're holding you in our hearts, Trudy, as you grieve and honor his life. Marion Brannon says, I'll be getting my second COVID vaccine on Tuesday. Yay, that's good news. And Marilee Ash Krishna says, I'm joyfully awaiting the birth of my second son in March. Please say prayers for healthy, peaceful birth. So may it be. Congratulations, Krishna, that's wonderful news. And Kat Holtz wishes everyone love and chocolate today. Jennifer May is celebrating Central East Region connections with a fun virtual winter institute last night. And thank you, Jen, for taking a lead role in that. Becky Haynes shares gratitude for all the people who sent me soup as I recovered from a kidney infection. May you continue to heal, Becky. Nancy Vanderstein shares that her husband Jim's radiation treatment works. That's wonderful news. We hold you in our hearts and thoughts as he continues to heal. Deborah Lynn Hook says, feeling Valentine's Day and such love everywhere with this special intensity this year, the ironic gifts of a pandemic. Our love goes out to you, Deborah Lynn. From the Sussman family, sharing that Ryan's second knee surgery is tomorrow and hoping all goes well. We hope so too, and that there is quick and complete healing. Elaine Bowen sends her thanks for all the donations for Miller Community House yesterday. We are a caring, loving, and generous community. Indeed, we are. Thank you to each of you, and thank you to Elaine for spearheading this opportunity to care for our our village, our community. Thank you everyone for sharing these things on your heart, the joys, the concerns we bring this morning in the spirit of caring for one another, being a village. Let's take a few moments of silence. Together, let's honor these things we've named and shared, those things we still hold in our hearts. And let's remember how intimately connected we are with each other in all of life. Into silence. The people of the village enjoyed each other's company so much that they were sad that they didn't have a place where they could all be together. The village church was too small. In fact, the Unitarian Universalist minister led three services each Sunday. No one's home or barn was big enough to hold everyone. And the village square was almost big enough for everyone to be together, but it wasn't comfortable to meet during the winter or when it was raining. And the pastures where the goats grazed, well, you know. So one day the mayor called the village together for a very important announcement. We don't have a big enough space to meet together. We need a place where we can be together for making music and having meals and meetings where our children can all play together and we can talk around the fire. What, what shall we do? Does anybody out there have an idea? Please use the chat box. Andrew Reed says a giant tent. Now there's an idea. Nor and Fred Gorey, oh, let's see. We're the Rome family, if we meet online, there is room for everyone. Now there's an idea. Nor and Fred Gorey say, go into the woods. Trudy Deal to everyone says four services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mike, Stephanie, Benny, and Katie said build Repl Club Hobbs Hall in the village. Now there's an idea. All right. Claudia Miller says let's raise money to build. Cheryl Spore says a huge paper box. Hmm. After the villagers gave their suggestions, including a football stadium, the mayor says, Aha. 
I've got the perfect idea. Let's build a beautiful meeting hall big enough for all of us. We'll have a design competition for the very best meeting hall. Everyone got so very excited and they rushed home to design their very best meeting hall. Just a week later, there were lots of ideas submitted. submitted. But no one could agree on what the building should look like, obviously. And rather than put a committee together to decide on a design and figure out what it would cost, the mayor didn't do anything. Then people in the village started to think and they all got the same idea. I can make lots of money if I build a meeting place and rent it out to the village. And the next thing you know, the village building department is swamped with building permits requests. The poor clerk can't keep up. And the local building supply store, Bestest Building Supplies Are Us, is swamped. One person thinks, I'll build a beautiful hall out of bricks. And then they go out and they buy up all the bricks. And then another person thinks, I'll build a stunning modern hall out of steel and glass that will shine. They buy up all the steel and glass. And yet another, and yet another thinks, ha, the most wonderful building will be mine and I'm going to use Legos. So they went to every store in the county and they bought all the Legos. And another person decides that she will build the best hall ever out of wood. She cleans out all the supply stores of all the wood and yet another person decides the village needs a hall built out of the finest stone. So you guessed it, they go to the quarry and buy the best limestone blocks for the building. And soon the village is filled with construction noises, bulldozers moving earth and sawing and hammering and cranes lifting things up into places and delivery trucks. And there is also the light of the welding of steel as steel frames go up. And of course, everyone is rushing to get their building done first. And the noise and chaos is constant, day and night. Okay, I'm gonna try to build the land.
Ooh, oh my. Nearby villages have all their building supplies bought up too. And then something awful happened. There were no more building supplies. No one can finish their building. And worse, no one can fix the leaky roof or repair their chimney or replace a broken window. Everyone was so busy building that nothing, that else, nothing else was getting done. The farms weren't being cared for. The flowers in the square wilted and died. The goats broke down fences and were running all willy-nilly. Schools, were, schools empty. were empty with no teachers. Some children were crying because they had no Legos to play with while other children were fighting and getting in the way. The market was empty. People are mad at each other and blaming each other for this disaster and they began avoiding each other. It was a crisis and something had to be done. The mayor got out his mayor's manual, but there was nothing in it about how to get the village back to normal. And they certainly hadn't covered this in mayor school. So he called the council of wise nabobs together to explain the problem. Oh, mighty council of wise nabobs, what shall we do? Well, the wise nabobs flipped through their manuals and compared notes and read the fine print, and they even Googled the problem. But there was nothing in their wise nabob counselor's manual or in the fine print, and Google had no answers either. So, village, what do you think they should do to get back to normal? I invite you to use the chat box to share some ideas with us. Randy and Heidi Schaefer Bish say share and share alike. Mary and Randall Leeson say hire Hal Walker. Oh, and Benny says combine all the ideas. Good idea, Benny. Jenny Horvath, start with a big potluck. Yeah, bring on the food. Pool their resources. Call the Time Lords and they will help, says the Rome family. Cheryl Spohr, put all the different constructions together, including the box. Jana Larson says call some senators. Helene Lopez says cooperate. Packer Man family says, listen and be quiet. Wonderful suggestions. As the council and the mayor met and thought about all of these ideas, the villagers stood around asking each other, what do we do now? They looked at the chaos all around them and realized everything had fallen apart. There were partially finished buildings everywhere and the village was a total mess. As they stood wondering about the mess they were in, the mayor and the counselors came out and asked for everyone's attention. But the people were chattering and continuing to argue amongst themselves. Yes, ideas like getting together and building their building because I'll be grateful, the doctor, he can fix anything, playing in the same key as others. Metis construction can help and Carol says a crankiness vaccine. It was then that the town troubadour had an idea and began singing because there is something very special about music and it can bring people together. So let's join the village troubadour in singing our hymn of community, Building Bridges. The mayor called everyone in the village together for an emergency meeting. The mayor spoke softly and chose their words carefully. We must find a way to move forward together. Right now we are divided and squabbling with each other and this will only drive us further and further from our hope to build beloved community. A low rumble of concern and whispers of worry floated through the air. Up, 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 up. How this is oh this is impossible. Ooh. It's too hard. Uh, there's no way. Forget about it. This is never gonna work. It was then that a small voice broke through the chaos and the hubbub. You just need the secret formula, said the small voice. And then the villagers watched as a child whispered into another child's ear. The next child's face lit up 
and they whispered the secret formula into another child's ear. It kept happening until every child was smiling because they knew the secret formula. The mayor and the wise nabob counselors were scratching their heads in total bewilderment. What is this secret formula, they asked each other, but no one knew. Finally, a young girl stood on a log so that everyone could see her, and she said, When my treehouse rotted through, our neighbors came to help our family fix it. When it was all done, it was all done. I my family made dinner for all the helpers and all the kids in the village came over to play. It was really nice. What if we work together? All it takes is just a touch of love. The villagers grew silent and considered the child's words. After a period of silence, another child spoke up. Well, I can share my paints. Then child after child spoke up. I can share my wheelbarrow. I'm good at mixing brick mortar. I can help and child after child offered their supplies and talents. The villagers began to realize that while pursuing their separate projects, they had lost sight of what they were building, a hall in the first place, to be together. It was then that an all ages building committee was formed to work together toward building one hall for everyone. Relief spread through the crowd as the previous tensions lifted and the village decided to work together. Voice after voice called out, I offer the town my steel. I'll give the town my wood for the rafters. I'll return to the farm to prepare meals for the workers and the builders. The children can have all my Legos to play with. And on and on it went, one after another, each villager offering their goods and services to their beloved community. The villagers discovered a secret. When we share what we have, our community thrives. This community is thriving in this time of virtual worship community and shared ministry because each of us shares our money, time, and care so generously. Thank you. To help others in our community thrive, we also give to agencies and organizations in Kent and beyond that serve those in need. February's special offering is for the Southern Poverty Law Center. The center is internationally known for its tolerance education programs, its legal victories against white supremacists, and its tracking of hate groups. So now in the spirit of gratitude for the gift of one another in this community and the abundance that makes our generosity possible, we give and receive the offering as a sign of our shared commitment to the life and work of this community and beyond. Let's say that I'm walking through my own hometown Left step, right step, listen to the sound See the people and the places, there's life all around I see the look upon their faces, it's my hometown This is our story, this is our song This is our community, we've been here all along we're all together on this walk through time. It's a never ending story, yours and mine. It's a never ending story, yours and mine. Well, let's say it was last night or a hundred years ago. The trees along the street watch the people come and go. Time moves fast. But the days move slow, our path is moving forward, our feet are meant to go. This is our story, this is our song, this is our community, we've been here all along. We're all together on this walk through time, it's a never ending story, yours and mine. It's a never ending story, yours and mine. What if just for one moment I could see what you see? And what if just for one minute I could feel what you feel? 
baby, if just for one moment I could know what you know, if I could know what you know. This is our story. This is our song. This is our community. We've been here all along. We're all together on this walk through time. It's a never ending story. Yours and mine. It's a never ending story. Yours and mine. Well, let's say as I walk, I start to sing a song. And then with every step, another voice sings along. As we sing together, ain't it plain to see? We're siblings and we're neighbors and we are free. This is our story, this is our song, this is our community, we've been here all along. We're all together on this walk through time, it's a never-ending story, yours and mine. It's a never-ending story, yours and mine. This is our story. This this is our song, this is our community, we've been here all along, we've been here all along. It took the villagers what felt like 15 years to complete their fellowship hall. It wasn't always easy, and sometimes it was downright hard. But they weathered the setbacks and celebrated their triumphs together. The building they created together was beautiful and provided a place for them all to gather in community. They had a wonderful dedication ceremony with former ministers, or um, mayors, and celebrities giving sermons, or um, speeches, and a big feast to celebrate. But what now, they wondered. So the mayor called a town hall meeting in the new hall to invite the village to decide, democratically of course, how they could share their hall with neighboring villages. Everyone had an opportunity to share their ideas. So what are your ideas? Let's take a moment to share them using the chat box. So Colleen says in RE, the children had these ideas, community garden, donation and giveaway times for those in need computer room for job search help, pet care, a music room, and a just for fun room. Joe Forsman says election night dinners again. Trudy Deal, community meals. Andrew Weep says wedding receptions. Renee Rahutsky says meeting place for marginalized groups. Yes, please. Kat Holt says of Hogwarts, of course. Eric says dancing. Ginny Horvath says a safe space for people who are homeless. The Rome family says using it for parties. Jill Forsman says concerts. Ellen McWilliams Woods, UUYJ, had the idea of serving a community meal for people who are homeless and our church community, which is a great idea. Uh, Packer Mann family says knitting clubs and writing groups. Brad Bolton says yoga and Tai Chi groups would meet there. Kara Kramer says, I love the idea of a warming center, showers, etc., for those who need them. Cheryl Spore says space for movies and adult RE. Katie Grigg Miller says a sacred song circle. Randy and Heidi Schaefer Bish, City Council Representative Garrett Ferrara asked to attend the grand opening. The whole city is proud. Yay, thank you, Randy and Heidi. Mary and Randy Leeson host UU youth conferences. Yes. Projector says fundraising auctions. Yes, our annual service auction with room for everybody to attend. Ah, Nor and Fred Gorey say pickleball. Kara Gramer, UU Congregational Stand Up Night. So that be like a talent show? A place for people to feel safe dressing up in colorful clothes and jumping around, says Brad. Randy and Heidi say dancing. Hal says table tennis. Rome family, game nights. Katie Grigg Miller, info sessions on solar power and electric vehicles. Well, how about our very own? Cloth labyrinth we can spread out on the floor too. 
Kathy and Bill Weiland says, let's put some solar panels on it and call it Hobbs Hall. Sounds like a great idea to me. Halloween party, a ministry fair, shared commercial kitchen for starting new food businesses, voter registration. Yes, indeed. Farmer's market meditation space. Benny says, a place with a thousand pianos. Turkey based orchestra. Cooking classes. You sleepover, says Evie in Rome. Sacred song circles, yoga, karaoke. That hall is going to be busy 24 hours a day. Wow, wonderful. Escape room, ooh, how fun. Forums from other people helping people in foreign lands. Post hour of code book discussions in the library, dog parties, sharing the love, lots and lots of wonderful ideas, hosting area speakers and discussions, yes. English as a second language class, yeah. Well, after a thorough discussion and so many ideas, the village formed a subcommittee naturally to develop a plan to support the community and implement the many wonderful ideas they decided on. As they came up with ideas, they always said, what a great idea, and all it takes is just a touch of love. And what happened next was truly special. The village grew and grew through the community outreach. They grew not just in size, but in the love that they had connecting more deeply and working together. They fed the hungry, and helped to support those less fortunate. They took great pride in knowing that their hall could be a safe haven for support groups and marginalized groups and a gathering <laughs> for justice work. They smiled as the town children played and laughed together in a safe place. The children had all the Legos they could ever want and they built a miniature version of the meeting hall with them. The villagers played music together, held, a, held community dances, and they had a special committee that took care of the meeting hall and kept it spotlessly clean because you never know when you might welcome guests. You see, it wasn't just a building. It wasn't just steel and glass and bricks. Oh, no, no, no. The walls of the hall were strengthened by the villagers' commitment. The roof thatched with hope. The floors held the strength of the community and the windows let in the light of love and it shone through the building. No, no, this wasn't no ordinary hall at all. It was a chance to build beloved community, a chance to spread joy and a chance to live out the dreams of a better world right there in their village with just a touch of love. I wanna thank the cast of this story and everyone who helped write it. And I wanna thank all of you for helping us tell this story today. We have so much love to share, that is so clear. And now the world needs that love. So to prepare to go out into the world, let's extinguish our chalices. And I invite you to join me in those words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. May we carry these in our hearts and minds until we are together again. And now, Hal, would you lead us in our closing song? We're going to sit at the welcome table. I would. We're.
gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. All kinds of people around that table. All kinds of people around that table one of these days. Hallelujah. All kinds of people around that table gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days no fancy style at the welcome table no fancy style at the welcome table one of these days hallelujah no fancy style at the welcome table I said gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days everybody we're gonna sit at the welcome table we're gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days hallelujah we're gonna sit at the welcome Gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. These are the words of Dory Summers. We all of us build houses for our dreams, the masonry and lumber, glass and tiles, a solid form where we see our hopes, a shelter and protection for our growth. This house shall be a dwelling place for courage, for integrity, for love, engendered, nourished by a family that speaks of we and means all humankind. May dreaming never cease for those within who know the world to be a troubled place, but dare to struggle with imperfectness towards that brighter hope, that better day. And now, as we continue to build a house for our dreams, a place where we struggle together toward a brighter hope and a better day. Let us keep dreaming and work to, together as we inspire love, seek justice, and grow in community. May it be so. Blessed be. And amen.